Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Well, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can review some of the criticisms that clients and counselors have of the psychiatric profession, so of psychiatrists. So some important kind of disclaimers here up front with this one. I'm a counselor educator, right? So I have a PhD in counselor education and supervision. I'm not a physician, I'm not a psychiatrist. When I refer to counselors in this video, I'm really talking about what I call the counselor type person. So this is also known as the therapist. So like a counselor, social worker, psychologist, marriage and family therapist. So someone who has a master's degree, which is a popular degree for practitioners, and others like me who have a PhD. I'm a scientist practitioner. By psychiatrist, I mean someone who has a medical license, so an MD, and this is someone who can prescribe medication, and they would generally be considered a practitioner. So it gets confusing because both PhDs and MDs are referred to as doctors, which is really an imprecise term. A better term would be a scientist practitioner for a PhD and a physician for an MD. So kind of another important disclosure here is I have a bias in terms of this topic, meaning I generally tend to like psychiatry, even though I'm a counselor, not a psychiatrist. I've heard of some of the bad experiences that clients and counselors have had with psychiatry, but again, overall, I tend to like that profession. I know it's popular for some counselors to oppose psychiatry, right? I think some of these counselors even become like heroes in the counseling profession. These are the people who stand up to the psychiatrist and say how bad medications are and say how unscientific psychiatry is. And I understand that there's always going to be a crowd like this, and I understand there's always going to be people who really identify with that. And I'm certainly willing to criticize the psychiatric profession and to debate psychiatrists on certain points, but only based on evidence. Because again, I'm a scientist, right? So I'm limited by the evidence. I just can't say whatever and not back that up. That's not what scientists do. And I feel like some of these counselors that kind of rant about psychiatry really haven't read the psychiatric journals. They really haven't read the evidence that supports medication. And sometimes I feel like they haven't read the evidence that supports the counseling profession. So it's more just vitriol and I guess a lot of energy and kind of whipping people up into a frenzy, you know, relative to the kind of excitement we see around this topic, right? But either way, I'm not sure it's really justified scientifically. Now, for what it's worth, I also don't hear many psychiatrists putting counselors down. And if they do, they're certainly not heroes for it. Now, I think there are some status reasons behind this, and I'll get to this when I talk about some of these different points. So as I mentioned, I'm going to explore some of the popular criticisms that counselors and clients have of psychiatrists. Some of these, I believe, are myths, but some of them are more or less substantiated, and I'll talk about my thoughts as to the validity of each criticism in terms of what I've observed in my clinical experience and what science tells us. So the first criticism is around the effectiveness of psychiatry, right? So we see this idea, this criticism, that psychiatry causes more suffering than it alleviates, right? So the idea here is that medications often don't work, there are a lot of side effects. There are withdrawal symptoms. We see wasted time because we see that time spent with a psychiatrist could have been spent with counseling. So there's really just this general idea that counseling is more effective. And again, psychiatry is not. So it's a waste of time to see a psychiatrist. Well, I'm not the primary person that somebody would report side effects to. But as a counselor, I have heard many stories of side effects, withdrawal, ineffective medications, and I suppose even a little bit of wasted time. But in my experience, that's not the majority of the people that see psychiatrists. I think psychiatrists generally work to mitigate problems like these. So in general, I view psychiatry as helpful. I believe that certain presentations only really respond to medication. So I've seen different situations where clients would not respond to counseling, but they did respond to medication. So as much as I believe in counseling, and I see it supported by the scientific literature, it would be unwise to exclude other avenues that could help clients, including referring them to a psychiatrist when indicated. The next criticism I hear is that psychiatrists are not cooperative. And in a sense, sometimes you hear like, 
that they're arrogant and condescending. And specifically, I've heard criticisms that inside of agencies, they don't cooperate with the counselors and the other staff, and they're not really good about communication between agencies. Well, I think that psychiatrists generally work well with counseling professionals. Most psychiatrists that I know are friendly and cooperative. So this is what I see the vast majority of the time, but I think there are a few instances of arrogance out there. And I think that these few instances really do a lot of damage to the reputation of psychiatry. Some counselors joke that psychiatrists are the kings and queens of mental health agencies, and it's not meant as a compliment. But again, I think it is a relatively small number. The next criticism is around the focus of psychiatry. And what this criticism is really getting at is this idea that psychiatrists select individuals who have more severe presentations, more severe mental disorders, in an effort to make more money, right? So the idea is they're really incentivized to make sure that clients don't improve. And this is easier to do if you accept severely mentally ill clients. Well, I know that the public certainly believes this, right? We see this repeatedly in terms of public opinion. But in my experience, this isn't really what's happening. Psychiatrists do tend to treat people with more severe presentations, but that's not because they choose those clients. Counseling, again, is not always effective for every disorder, and sometimes medication is necessary. I mentioned this before. So psychiatrists do end up treating individuals who are not getting help from counselors. So I think that's why we see more severely ill people with psychiatrists, not because of some incentive to make more money. Now to address the specific point that psychiatrists keep people ill to continue to make money, I've never really seen any evidence of that. Psychiatrists in general are good, honest people, and they work hard, and also they're extremely busy. So there's a lot of factors there kind of working that would make them seem like perhaps they're a little cold and distant, but they have to kind of be in a hurry because again, they're quite busy. So I think a lot of the factors here just have to be weighed carefully, and the evidence supports that psychiatrists do a good job, and they're not really trying to involve themselves in any type of fraud or trying to get more money out of clients. The next criticism is that psychiatrists don't spend as much time with their clients as counselors do. Well, I think the evidence actually supports that this criticism is accurate. Psychiatrists typically spend around 10 minutes to a half hour with clients, once every four to 12 weeks, but there are different situations. I mean, I've seen situations where clients saw a psychiatrist three times a week or even more, so there are certainly exceptions to that. Counselors tend to spend about 45 minutes to an hour with a client once every week. So I don't think this is a matter of good versus bad, though. I think this is just a product of the field of psychiatry and the field of counseling. They work differently. So psychiatrists, I think, mostly spend the time that they need, but sometimes, again, they're quite pressed for time. The same thing can happen to counselors. But if you look at the way that psychiatrists treat clients versus the way counselors treat clients, it makes sense that a psychiatrist wouldn't need as much time with a client. They're really kind of running down the symptoms, seeing if there are any changes, looking at the medications and some other things they look at, and then making a decision. Do they prescribe the same thing? Do they prescribe something different? Right? They have a limited range of choices. Counseling is really talking about somebody's feelings, thoughts, values, behaviors, goals, motivations. There's just a lot to it, and there's a lot more ground to cover in a counseling session than there is in a psychiatric appointment. So I think that this really explains the time difference. It's not that psychiatrists are rushing out of their sessions or that counselors are taking too long. It's just the way the professions are set up. There is an interesting dynamic that emerges here, which is psychiatrists often have a higher total number of clients than counselors, but counselors often have closer relationships with clients. So the dynamics are different from psychiatry over to counseling. Now the next criticism is around money, and I've heard this one many, many times, right? Psychiatrists make more money than they deserve. This is the criticism. Well, I mean, you really have to look at the numbers, right? Here in the United States, at least in the area where I live, psychiatrists earn somewhere between $175,000 and $225,000 a year if they work for an agency, 
And in private practice, I've seen examples where they can make in excess of $350,000 a year. A substantial amount of money, really, either way there. Counselors, if they work for an agency, they would earn somewhere between forty dollars and $60,000 if they have a license. In private practice, they can make around a hundred, but there's really not much ability to go higher than that. So $350,000 compared to a hundred thousand, or if you want to look at agencies, maybe around two hundred compared to fifty thousand. It's a substantial difference. So psychiatry does pay well compared to counseling. Medical school is more expensive than a master's program, and the demand for the services of psychiatrists is higher. It's simply supply and demand. There is a counselor shortage, but there is a massive psychiatrist shortage. So I don't think they necessarily make too much, but I think counselors make too little. But what professional doesn't believe this about their own profession, right? Anybody you talk to who's a professional is going to say that their profession is underpaid, is undercompensated. So it's not entirely original to say that counselors should earn more money, right? So the next criticism is in terms of the accuracy of the work that psychiatrists do. And we see this criticism that psychiatrists don't choose medications based on science, rather their work is trial and error. Well, psychiatrists can choose medications based on science and using observations, including trial and error. So many psychiatrists have told me over the years that they're not positive about the mechanisms of many of the drugs that they use, but that's because no one knows, not because they haven't studied it. So just like some of therapy is a mystery, like the Therapeutic Alliance, why does that work? Why does that help people? Some of psychiatry is a mystery. It's true that many psychiatrists try different medications, they observe reactions, and they make changes based on that. And this is part of how science works. So I wish there was more precision to psychiatry and, of course, to my profession, counseling. But the human brain is really far too complex for that. So, yes, there is a degree of trial and error with psychiatry and in counseling, but that doesn't mean that it's totally separate from science. Also, to be fair, I think there are some medications that psychiatrists understand very well in terms of the mechanism. So for some of the prescriptions that they order, they more or less know what's going to happen, and other times, again, it's more of a mystery. But it's really very dependent on the medication and, of course, on the individual differences that they see in clients. So again, just a very complex area when you mix chemicals with the human brain. Now, the last criticism I'll review here is around work ethic, right? And this is also one I've seen many times. So I see this criticism that psychiatrists have never seen an eight-hour workday. Well, again, to be fair, certainly when they were in school, they did, right? Medical school. But yes, I've seen many examples where there are four-hour workdays, taking Fridays off, always coming in late, always leaving early. But I've also seen more examples of incredible work ethics, where psychiatrists come in either early or on time and stay the whole day and really do a fantastic job. So is it more common for psychiatrists to have shorter work days than counselors? I think it is. But to be fair, I think this is the result of being more in demand. If a psychiatrist knows when they work for an agency that they can't be replaced easily, then it makes sense that they're going to maybe come in a little late and leave a little early. I don't think it's a psychiatrist thing. I think it's a status thing, right? There's a tendency for those that are high paid to believe that they're in charge, whether they actually are in charge or not. So when you have an agency and you have some people earning, again, forty to 60000 and others earning up to 225000 then yes, I think the people who earn significantly more money are going to believe that maybe they're above some of the rules. So this isn't really a problem of psychiatry. It's a problem of work environments where some people have very high status and other people have lower status. So this is something we're going to see in a lot of professions, not just the mental health treatment community. So I know whenever I talk about these different topics, like the criticisms that counselors and clients may have of psychiatry, there are going to be a variety of opinions. People have had different experiences with counselors and psychiatrists and probably have many examples from real life that they think of when they hear these different opinions and criticisms. If you agree with me or disagree with me or have other opinions on this topic, 
please put those opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate a really interesting and useful dialogue. As always, I hope you found this description of criticisms of psychiatry to be interesting. Thanks for watching.